I'm here at Eloxcon with artist Tom Kidd. Uh, thank you for speaking with me. You're welcome. Um, so I'd like to start by asking, is there an artwork here you are most proud of and why? Um, there may not be one that I would say. Let's, let's say proud, and pride is, is, a, is a deadly sin, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to apply that word here. Okay. But I'll tell you about one in particular. Okay. Um, this is actually the cover to a book called uh, Grantville Gazette 8. Mm -hmm. And um, my title for it is Uptime Saloon, so I have retitled it. Okay. But what I find pleasing about this, thank you, Andrea, is that it's unique among covers in that the author came to me, called me, and said, Tom, come up with an idea. Send me the sketch, and I'll write a story around it. Hmm. And, and, and um, ultimately, I sent him the finished painting, too, hmm. because I changed it from the sketch. And um, it's a, it's a uh, what you call alternate history. In this case, 20th century people have been transported back to the 17th century, mm -hmm. and they're changing history. Okay. And to me, some of it could be funny. So I thought the, the, the people from the 17th century might create a theme bar that would be popular um, because it would be exciting to be have 20th century stuff. Yeah. So they bought all this crap from people to put in their, in their, um, in their theme bar. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, as I was painting it, how about time travel artifacts? Yeah. So I've got Mr. Peabody from Mr. Peabody and Sherman in the uh, Wayback Machine. See him, yeah. I've got the Terminator 2 skull here. I've got... Um, yeah, the TARDIS. I've got the TARDIS. I've got the, the classic time machine from H.G. Uh, Wells Time Machine, 1950 movie. Um, and um, Time Bandits. I have Time Bandits, sure. Time Tunnel. Uh, yeah. uh, it's about time. And some other things in there that are kind of hidden. Yeah. But, so, so, the, the, but I like this, even though I ended up spending an extra week on it, because it was my idea. I got to do my idea. <laughs> so anyway, so, so maybe a little pride in that. Okay. Um, but, um, but among these, there's... There's so many different projects here represented. Oh, yeah. This was this is both a book cover and a project of my own called Nemo, and this the, the, I, my title is Abbey Air Race. Okay. And um, it takes place in this other world that I completely invented, but it also was originally done as a book cover for a book called Fitzpatrick's War, mm -hmm. um, and there were there's military equipment all about. Oh, okay. I changed it. Oh, yeah. I made it fit my universe. Oh, okay. And now it's an illustration for uh, Nemo. Yeah, it's really cool. It's a really nice composition, colors. And... These lights really show off the reds. Oh yeah. The reds and the reds and the blues to some degree, but yeah. but it's it's it, it, the the colors you see here are a little bit heightened by these lights. Oh okay. How do you know when a work is finished? Yeah. I am extremely unfortunate in that I don't. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, the, um, this one up above, Ship and Grain, mm -hmm. um, I did it originally as a... Um, the assignment came as from a bank, advertising within the bank, and it was to promote communication and working together and everything else. Okay. Now you're looking at it, you're thinking, I don't see I don't see that. Well originally <laughs> she wore a business suit ah. and um, uh, maybe another um, put more of the painting existed over there. Okay. Which had a male counterpart mm -hmm. that was looking at there and they were doing business stuff. Okay. But I I thought I don't I don't um, it sat in my studio for a few months. I go, I don't like it that way. And I, 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 I cut off that part of the painting. And I I changed her clothes completely. Oh, and I added the sea serpents. Yeah, I wondered about that. Yeah, that was not, the bank did not ask for sea serpents. <laughs> so, but the one thing they did ask for is they wanted it to have a maximum parish feel. Okay. And that's what people say when they see it. So I guess I was successful yeah. in, in following that. So. I didn't know, so is that like a, a mother sea serpent with uh, baby sea mm. serpents? 
Exactly. It's 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 like a, 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 a goose uh, with her goslings. Yeah. You know, it's that's pretty exactly cool. what's going on. Yeah. That's an, and the, the colors are pretty strong with that one. Especially here. Yeah. yeah. But that's parish for That's an actual yeah. parish. Yeah. Um, what inspires you? You'll notice I take time to, to answer your questions. Yeah, take time. Um, uh, because the first thought that came, came to mind was a corny one, and that's nature. Okay. Uh, um, these days, more than ever, I spend a lot of time out in nature. Uh, artist's job can be pretty sedentary. Mm -hmm. I, I do paint standing up, which helps. Mm -hmm. But a sedentary lifestyle, turns out, it's not good for you. Right. It's, so I try to get out. Uh, once or twice a day, and I walk around. Mm -hmm. I walk around. I walk through woods. I walk through. Fortunately, I live in a, a, an area I can do that in. Mm -hmm. um, and um, what I see is making it into my paintings. Okay. Uh, I do take a camera with me, mm -hmm. and I do fo photograph a lot of stuff. And there are there's a lot of wildlife near me. There's, oh, okay. For some reason, there's an abundant amount of wildlife, mm -hmm. although. Other people somehow can't see it. It's, it's like it's right there. Uh, How do you? You didn't see the snipe? <laughs> is, it, is there such a thing as a snipe? <laughs> yes, yes, no. there is a bird called a snipe. Oh, it's there. very fast. Uh -huh. It's very elusive. Um, in fact, the word sniper comes from snipe. Oh, really? Because if you have the ability to, to sight one, and especially shoot it in flight. Mm -hmm. um, then you're considered a sniper, huh. and that's how the term for sharpshooters uh, sort of came from. Interesting. So, anyway, okay. little things you learn while talking to an artist. Yeah. <laughs> Important uh, things about uh, art. No, yeah. it's that's interesting. I guess you take time to see nature, whereas other people might not. Um, I don't know what it is, but I, I think I have an an eye for anomalies and movement. Oh, okay. The slightest movement I'll see. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, which is which is really um, something that someone who um, hunters are like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I'm not I'm not shooting the animals. I'm just observing them or taking their photographs. Mm -hmm. But that same sort of talent I I seem to have. Um, and um, that, there's been studies on this, and some people are more like farmers. Mm -hmm. They're able to pay attention to what they're doing, concentrate yeah. on what they're doing. Yeah. And I can, I work in, in quiet. Mm -hmm. I mean, I might listen to something, I might listen to music, I might listen to a book, mm -hmm. but I don't like people in my studio. Yeah. I work, I don't want distractions when I'm working because I'm very easily distracted. Oh, okay. I see. And for that matter, <laughs> if something flies by my window, I don't like a snipe. <laughs> right. I'm like, what was that? <laughs> I've got to go find out what that was. And, uh, you know. Okay. So, so you need a very controlled environment. Sure, for me. I'm, although although I've had some training out in the middle of... But one of my first um, art jobs was... Uh, I was at Bush Gardens and I did um, caricatures and portraits. Oh, okay. And um, you do that in public. Right. And um, we're talking bush gardens, and I would do the caricatures in the bar. Oh, boy. So I only not only did I deal with the public, I dealt with the drunken public. Yeah. So I don't think it was good for me. I, I think that it taught me something, but I don't think it was good for me overall. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Let's see. What is your most important artist tool? Is there something you can't live without in your studio? Artist tool? Artist tool. You know, it's weird. I think it's... I, it's either my, a pencil or a brush. I mean, that's got to be it. I mean, yeah. what else could there be? That's, yeah. Um, I've heard that answer. Um, for me, I get a lot of ideas with pencil. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'll show you over here. I know that... I know no one can see this as we do this. But we can describe but, it. But um, a lot of these are just sort of um, 
Oh, your sketches. Yeah. Or not I sketches mentioned, anymore. I mentioned in, in Nature that I was seeing. This is, this is an idea that <laughs> came from Nature. Are they sharing uh, cigarettes? Or? No, they're ser- sharing the Sibley Guide, these two oh, birds. The Sibley is, Guide. If, if anyone's familiar with birding, uh-huh. you've got to have your Sibley Guide to identify uh, your birds. Uh, and they're sharing it so they can identify uh, each other and, uh, <laughs> or their friends. And what I'm looking for is some of the ideas that, that I generate on my own more so than others. Yeah, and, oh. you know, there's so many monsters to be seen in insect form and mm. arachnid form and everything else. And um, So that's a hideous monster chasing a uh, woman in a space suit. Well, it's called Tom Meets Andrea Love Story, and that's yeah. those, that's Andrea over there. That's oh. my wife. <laughs> oh, oh, got it. See, so this is me. Oh, I see. That's how I see myself. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so. I'm in the middle of the interview. Oh, dude, we can pause. Okay, okay. so we're we were talking right. about, you were talking about the important tool, and I guess you mentioned the pencil when you were oh, showing yeah. the so, sketches. So, okay, are we set? Yeah. So, once I have a pencil in my hand, for some reason, it's, it's almost like a connection to my brain. I can think much better. I get, uh, the ideas just start coming. Mm-hmm. And all I need is a blank piece of paper, pencil, and ideas come. But when I go to paint, um, the brush tends to control the aesthetics. Mm-hmm. Um, I might have a sketch, I might have thought everything out, presumably, but um, I don't transfer a drawing up. Mm-hmm. I start with the brush and the surfaces of paint. Okay. I just start painting. Okay. I paint in I block in areas, mm-hmm. um, you get the feel of the composition, and there's when you when you do that, when you start laying in areas, there's a natural sense of composition that takes place, and every little kink that might be in a pencil drawing works itself out in the underpaint. Oh, okay. And um, I, that's my favorite way to paint. That's the way I've been painting for the past 15 years. Oh, okay. Just directly with the paint. Mm-hmm. Um, something of a something of a, a wet, washy medium. Medium. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, umbers. Or umbers and violet, or something like that. Okay. Use it on a tone surface, but but it, 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 it's really like the medium is telling me what to do mm-hmm. more so than me actually thinking about it. Right. I follow. Which I'm guessing there's some brain activity there, but it feels like it really feels like it's it's doing it, not me. Huh. Interesting. Makes it easy, maybe. I like it. Well, I like it that way. I like it that way um, because I have a tendency to think things through. I'm one of those people like thinks every little detail through and imagines every little thing. Right. And if I'm going to uh, like go to this convention, I've already imagined the entire convention, how everything's set up, and where everything's going to go, and, and, and um, how I'm going to do things, and how I'm going to present things, and ideas, and, and structure, and placement, and how heavy something's going to be, and how, am I going to be able to carry it? Oh, okay. How am I going to transport it there? Uh-huh. Should I bring bring something to roll it on? All those things are calculated in. I'm always thinking about those things. Right. But when I'm painting, the paint's leading me. Yeah. I'm, let, I'm losing control. I'm letting it show me where to go. And you don't mind. I think it's the best way to go. Yeah. I think you're actually really digging deeper into your brain. Yeah. Huh. And, 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 and using parts of your brain that maybe you don't use mm-hmm. during the day. Huh. As much. I can't be thinking like that when I'm driving. Right. <laughs> I have to be concentrating on it. Yeah. That could lead you to strange places. Um, did I ask this? I, is there an element of art you enjoy working with most and why? And that could be uh, material, material that you use or hmm. the process. That's actually not too hard. Um, did you want to ask it again or...? Or did you just ask it? Oh, I just asked it. Okay. Sorry. No, that's fine. Um, it, pretty much anything where I have to uh, create something that's truly new in my mind. Mm-hmm. If, if that didn't exist before, um, I want to make it. Yeah. I want to. I want to. I want to build uh, a structure. I want to build. Um, I want to make new types of creatures, new types of people. I want to build a whole world. I want to make, make all those, those parts. Whenever I'm, I'm called on 
to paint something I painted before, that's the least interesting. Right. And, okay. and, and something that um, that is uh, structurally part of this universe universe often goes in my paintings, but I'm always looking to put something that doesn't belong mm -hmm. or something that that doesn't naturally belong. I should say. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right. So, how did you start making art, and why do you make art? This is a long story. You ready okay. for a long story? Yes. Um, a combination of a serious brain disease mm. and drugs. Okay. Um, I, um, I, as far back as I know, people would comment on my drawings and my art and say, wow, that looks like the real thing. Right. And um, I remember that the teacher picked up a drawing in class and said, Tom, you drew a face. That's a human face you drew. And I said, well, that's what you told us to do. Right. And she said, Tom, you're in kindergarten. <laughs> I go, did I do something wrong? She says, no, but would you trace this? What did you do? I says, there's a whole bunch of faces in the class. I just drew one of the faces in the class. They're right there. It's like it's like an open book test. That's what you gave me. Right. And so I I it was something that I would I've always been good at looking at something, holding that image in my head long enough to get it onto some surface. Okay. Um, and um, um, but it seemed like such a natural thing to do. I never really thought of doing it as a profession. Okay. Uh, so um, I did that, and um, um, up until the first grade, I was I was drawing, and and um, I oh finally you came back for it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, and um, um, in the first grade, we were living in Florida. Okay. And uh, Tampa. Tampa. I guess you were at Bush Gardens later. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, this was years later. We left there and we came back. Oh, okay. My dad was in the Air Force. Oh, okay. uh, and I, um, I, I was evidently bit by a mosquito, oh. and I developed uh, St. Louis encephalitis. Oh, okay. And um, uh, so that put me in a coma. Okay. I, I was, they found me in a ditch. Oh. And I said. Who are you, kid? And I went, I'm. And they figured out where I came from. Got my parents took to the hospital. So I was in a coma for. I think it was just three days. Minor coma. Oh, my, I didn't know there were minor comas. Minor coma. <laughs> and and I came out of it, and evidently it screwed me up. So so um. So they failed me from second grade. They huh. said, Tom, you you got to repeat second grade because you can't function. Huh. And um, so I took second grade a second time. And I did great. I started. I, I started. I knew everything, kinda. I remembered it, kinda. I just couldn't function like a normal human being. There was something wrong with me. Okay. Because of the, oh, and I had seizures. Oh. So that was you know a distraction. Right. Um, and um, uh, so I was doing really well up until um, sixth grade. Okay. Where. I had a petite mall seizure in okay. class during a spelling bee. Oh. Then the doctor said, I came out all bruised up. This right. whole side of my face, I broke my chin. Oh, okay. Uh, they said, let's put him on phenobarbital and dilan. Okay. And um, uh, only, only years, years later did I read that they don't do that anymore oh. because it ruins the kid. Oh, really? It ruins them. And, and I worked my way up to being an A student, uh -huh. and now I was a B student. Okay. And I thought, well, I can still do art. I didn't know it was the drugs. I thought oh. I had just gotten stupid. Okay. I didn't make the connection between the two. Yeah, who, who's going to think a drug is going to have that yeah. effect? Yeah. So, um, so I said, I'll, I'll start doing art. And I decided I would be an artist at uh, age 12 because, okay. of, because of drugs. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, it's a little different from what you're, you know, that suggestive way you said it. 
why would I do it that way? <laughs> other than other than to put you over here and then yank you back over here in the story. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so from from age 12 on, I decided I would be an artist. I studied commercial art, mm. and I said, ah, that's I don't want to do that. And then I found. Uh, Norman Rockwell. And I said, "Oh, that looks like a good job, but I want to do like wild stuff." And then I discovered, "Oh, here's Frank Rosetta. Okay. Here's John Berkey. Here's Paul Lair. Here's a whole litany of fantastic, you know, artists. Jeff Jones and uh, Bernie Wrightson and all these guys. And Neil Adams, who's over here, mm -hmm. you know. And I thought, I want to do that. Yeah. And so." Um, um, I did that for a while. I, I won a scholarship to Syracuse. Mm -hmm. I dropped out because I didn't think I was learning enough. I literally said, "This, I'm not, I want to learn a lot more. This is not going fast enough. Too not slow. Teaching me enough." Yeah. And um, I moved to New York and did, did what I wanted to do. So that's it. So did you ever think about I, I other just, professions? <laughs> animation. Well, you know. Um, um, I remember an episode of Walt Disney. Uh, we were talking about Winsor McKay. Okay. Uh, and Winsor McKay had said in the future the great artists will make their, their pictures move. Right. And Winsor McKay did a bunch of animated things on his own. Okay. Um, he did like 10, 15 minute little. Am I running out of. <laughs> no, I'm just making sure I didn't push a button. Sorry. Um, uh, and um, uh, certainly that, that uh, inspired me, but I just never had the material to do anything like that. Oh, okay. And you need, you need cameras. In my day, you needed cameras, you needed special setups, you needed, you know. And, and my understanding is, as an animator, you start up in between and yeah. doing a lot of boring stuff. And I wanted to go straight to the nitty gritty of right. making pictures. Right. So I did that. Although um, I did work for Walt Disney for three months. I worked on the, the feature animation movie Treasure Planet. Oh, did you? Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. I did all kinds of concept art for that. Mm -hmm. Stacks of stuff. Did you enjoy it, or was it? I loved it. Oh. I didn't think I would like it. I, I thought um, I just lost a big client when out of business, mm -hmm. and um, Disney approached me. And I thought everybody says terrible things about Disney, mm -hmm. and they were great. They were great. They were great. Yeah, they were great to work with. They really, well, believe it or not, they really know what they're doing. <laughs> they are fantastic at what they do, and and I never worked with a team of people with that level of ability before, yeah. and, and it was very humbling, yeah. um, and, and I was like, oh man, they're going to be blown away with what I'm doing, they're, they're, I turn it in, they go, oh, that's really good, but look at what, look what the, a couple of the other artists are doing, I go, oh, Jesus, they're way ahead of me on this, huh. this is incredible, huh. but you're supposed to look at, that whole idea, you're supposed to, everyone's looking at each other's art, and you're getting inspired by it, and, and, and all of it's growing kind of together. Oh, okay. As a mass, and that's the idea. You're not supposed to be competing with each other. But right. You're working as a team, uh, and they worked really well. The team is a really good organization, in my opinion. Okay. Now, I didn't. I wasn't employed by them. It might be different. Right. But they were. They were very good about paying on time. Extremely good. Yeah. Um, and um, I would have stayed with them, ex except maybe for uh, the deadly sin of pride. Is that? Is that they? Um, they said um, uh, we're going to the next part of the project. Um, your involvement might be like this, and they showed it to me. They told me about it, and they said um, um, uh, we're thinking about some other artists, you know, bringing them in. in uh, but but you're certainly under consideration, and I just said thanks, and I just let it go. I figured, well, I'm going to get the job, uh, and they hired other people instead. Uh, I thought I, I thought, oh, I'm a shoe in Sure, I'm. I really did good work for them, and everybody, everybody telling me. I showed it to some friends. They said, Tom, this is some of your best work. But maybe those guys' best work was better. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe they went as far as to go to push for the job a little bit. And I did. So you blame pride? Uh, yeah. Yeah, in a lot of cases. Yeah. Okay. Um. 
certainly not blaming myself. Ah, got it, got it. Make sure that's, yes, that's understood. What role does the artist have in society? That's a great question. I, no, I do have an answer to that, too. <laughs> um, here's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. um, we've studied animals extensively. Animals can have language. Mm -hmm. Animals have societies. Mm -hmm. Animals can make tools. Right. Um, animals have amazing cognitive functions, a variety of different animals. Right. Um, birds are amazing. Birds can solve all kinds of amazing problems. Crows, ravens, it's incredible. Okay. Um, not a single animal can take an idea inside its head and create an image from that idea that it can communicate to any other species, even its own species. Right. It can't do it. Huh. Now, yeah. I may be talking more illustration than art here, but good right. illustration to me is art. Mm -hmm. um, but humans can draw a schematic. It, a human can draw how they do something, draw how to build something. Um, Nikola Tesla um, would write up how to build a machine part mm -hmm. and send it to uh, his mach uh, machinist and they get back to him and say, we can't build this. We don't know what it looks like. Nikola Tesla would go over there. He's very paranoid because Edison stole from him. Ah. Um, and um, he'd say, we draw it for him. Mm -hmm. And he said, you can have that for five minutes to study that, then give it back to me and I'll destroy it. Yeah. But they needed that illustration to know what to build. Right. So I say art is the most important part of our society because it's the, it's the original thing that carried on ideas. It carries on ideas better than anything else. Yeah. Uh, I know people who do 3D animated schematics of how to take apart um, uh, complicated machines, how to take out certain parts and replace them, and they need these things, and they're paid huge amounts of money, so that the people who buy them know how how they work and how to repair them. Right. And you can just call it the animation, it'll literally show you, it'll light up the bolts and screw, and then show it pulling out, it's, it's so cool, some of, some of the stuff I see. Yeah. So, so, I'm saying that, I, I'm going out on a limb here. Um, and, and, and saying art, as particularly illustration, in terms of communication, may be one of the greatest things. You make a good argument. I mean, I hadn't heard that before, and that it makes makes a lot of sense. It's something to think about. Something well, I put, I, I put some time into it, yeah. and, and you've heard the short version. Ah, okay. You've heard the short version. I've done the research, and, and, and um, it seems to hold true. Yeah. It seems to hold true. I, I, I need someone who want to seriously challenge me, then I will do more research to make sure I'm right. I can't challenge that. That's a, I, yeah, I like that idea. Um, what movies, books, or other artwork in science fiction or fantasy have inspired you? Um, uh, I've named some already. Right, you have. Um, uh, uh, artist. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, early on, I started reading some of Jack Vance's stories, okay. and um, he's, he may be lesser known among um, the more movie people and such, but um, an extremely well-respected author, mm -hmm. among authors. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it, you know the, the person mentioned earlier that she liked my Nemo work? Mm -hmm. That's a story that I wrote and illustrated, but has never been published. Right. Um, that idea, even though when I had it, I didn't realize where it had come from, it had come from reading all the Jack Vance stories. Oh, okay. And, um, and, and when I exhibited some of those paintings for the first time, a publisher came up to me and said, these would be great for my Jack Vance anthologies I'm doing. And oh. then it's like, a little light bulb went over my head, I said, that's because Jack Vance inspired me to do those paintings and inspired me to write the story that I wrote. Huh. Uh, to go with, that the, the paintings go with. Uh -huh. And so, um, 
for a good uh, eight years, I did Jack Vance anthologies and I illustrated the, the Dying Earth by Jack Vance for the same company yeah. and, and all of those things. So, strongly Jack Vance. Uh -huh. But I read, um, in back to, to authors, I've read most of the classic SF guys, Arthur C. Clarke, um, Isaac Asimov. Um, <coughs> um, I'm really enjoying these Eric Flint books, these oh, yeah. 1632 series that I've been doing. Um, uh, I, these, are, these are listed if I started, they would go on forever, but everything is, um, is all kind of mixed together in um, a, a maybe tasty soup. Yeah. Uh, and I know that once we're done, I'll think of another yeah. dozen more names. But right now, I can't. Okay, no, that's good. Um, is there an art piece you'd like to create that you haven't done so yet, and what is it? You know, I can't. I, this is something I'm not sure I can even describe. Um, can you draw it? Well, I've tried to draw it. <laughs> I've tried to draw it a few times, and I failed. <laughs> but. Um, but, but I was just talking to another artist about this mm -hmm. um, earlier. Uh, but I, I'm the I, I, I'm a big fan of architecture. Oh, okay. And so I study all kinds of periods of architecture. But I wouldn't say I'm anywhere near um, an authority on architecture. I just like it. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and, and, and I like combining periods, I like mixing things in my head and coming up with my own sort of ideas and, and taking like an idea that that couldn't have worked back in the 12th century, but now I can take that and make it work hmm. in the 25th century. Right. Um, and one of the ideas I've been working on is um, a structure that would ha have to exist in space but that has gravity at different angles all throughout it. Oh. And have it have it work, you know, and then and there would be gardens, there would be sculptures, there would be um, all these things on each level, and some of the levels would be curving. Right, okay. And then and then and then there could be walkways where people are walking on the bottom and the top. Right. And I've I've done eight drawings of this and none of them work. Oh really? So I'm sure someone else is going to figure it out, and I'll go, oh, that's how I should have done it. Huh. But it's an idea I've played, played with several times, never done. So. And you're still at it every now I and play then? With it every, play with it every now and then, and I pull out the, the old drawings and look at them and go, nope, I need to start all over, completely all over, and try it again. Any, so. any favorite architectural style? Um, to me, older is better. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Older is older is better. Um, almost all periods, um, almost almost all areas of the world. This mm -hmm. uh, older is better. I'm I'm a, I'm I'm very much against um, um, glass rectangles. Oh, okay. I don't like those. What can I do no, for you? No, oh. Captain Morgan. Let me take a sip. Okay. Can you tell my voice is cracking, or is it obvious? No, it's. Uh, it's been even throughout. But actually, I think we're just about... Evenly raspy. I think we pretty much have covered we, okay. it all, though, What's actually. It? Have yeah. we? Are we done? Yeah, do you have any last words, or...? No, no that's, that open a question, I can't answer. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Please visit chrisalvarez.com for more cool stuff. That's C-R-I-S-A-L... V-A-R-E-Z dot com. Thanks for listening and keep imagining the future.